بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ہیو اے لک ایٹ دا سیکنڈ سیٹ آف پریکٹس کوشچنس بفور وی ہیو اے لک ایٹ دا پریکٹس کوشچنس لیٹس ہیو اے کوئک ریویو آن دا ٹاپکس دیٹ ہیو بین کورڈ سو فار آفٹر دا فرسٹ پریکٹس سیکشن ویڈیو سو دا ٹاپکس دیٹ وی ہیو کورڈ سنس دا فرسٹ پریکٹس سیشن ویڈیو آر چینجنگ دا ویلیو ان اے پیرامیٹر ٹرانسفارم اے کوئری configure data loading for queries design a star schema that contains facts and dimensions identify and create appropriate keys for relationships merge and append queries create a common data table define a relationships cardinality and cross filter direction implement role playing dimensions configure table and column properties so in these videos we have kind of finish the work that happens inside the power query editor and we have moved on to the next part which is the data model so we have started building the data model and the stuff that you need to consider in building a data model inside the power query editor that has been covered so these are have uh, are the topics that have been covered so far let's have a quick view of some important points to remember before we actually jump into the practice questions so we have uh, covered the different joint types in detail in one of the videos but one of the joint ty types which is very rarely used but it is important and has not been covered in the videos is the cross join so first let's understand what is a cross join so a cr cross join is a type of join that returns the cartesian product of rows from the tables in the join in other words it combines each row from the first table with each row from the second table so if you have a situation where you are required to apply a cross join so what a cross join does is that if you have two tables then it combines each row from the first table with each row from the second table so this is a very extensive and very expensive operation and it is very rarely used but if you want to uh, read about it in more detail that in what scenarios this is useful and how you actually use a cross join you can go ahead and read this article on the redacat.com website so make sure that you understand a uh, cross join although this will be covered once we will uh, look at dax but it uh, from a power query perspective you should also know about this the second thing is that you should make yourself familiar with the basic sql query functions and the sql queries which comprise select from and where although the sql portion is not a part of the pl300 syllabus but in case of uh, covering the sql server um, where we actually connect to a sql server or any database where you can actually use sql queries to actually fetch data from the databases so in case some question or a very minor portion of the question comes or maybe some option is there on the question which actually refers to a basic level sql query that comprises the select statement the from statement or the where statement or a combination of all three then you should at least be able to understand that what is happening so you can just go and you know uh, look at these uh, three statements in case you are not familiar and you will be easily able to understand what actually is meant by and how these three uh, different uh, sql functions work in tandem question 2 so here it says that you receive revenue data that must be included in the microsoft power bi reports you preview the data from a microsoft excel source in power query as shown in the following exhibit so we have this raw data that is coming from an microsoft excel and we view it inside the power query so then uh, the question is that you plan to use the data in several ways especially using year and product to filter the revenue you need to transform the data to ensure that you can build visuals where product and year can be used as filters in filter pane or slicer visuals the solution must ensure that the columns are named appropriately for the data that they contain which three actions should you perform in sequence so here we have a list of six sections and we have to select three actions and we have to also select the right sequence and the actions are select department and product and unpivot columns select use first row as headers select department and product and unpivot other columns rename the attribute column to year and the value column to revenue 
select use header as first row rename the attribute column to revenue and value and the value column to year so the answer to this question is that the first step is going to be select use first row as headers the second option is select department and product and unpivot other columns rename the and, and the last step is the rename the attribute column to year and the value column to revenue so remember we always want to have data in a way that we have for each column the values we do not actually mind having more number of rows but we actually want to reduce the number of columns and we want to have separate entities in the in the in the column so the first step is that we we clearly see that we do not have the names uh, the proper name so the first step uh, is to actually put the uh, first row which is this one as the headers so this is going to be the first one so then we will have the department and product as the headers for these two columns and then we will have the years which are 2016 17 18 and 90 in these columns then the second step is that we will select these two columns which are department and product and then we are going to unpivot so what unpivot is going to do that it is going to reduce the number of columns and all the data is going to come in the rows and we will have two more columns and the last step would be uh, which is uh, the step number d as is that we will go we are going to rename those two columns so the first column we are going to rename which is the attribute column as the year and the second which actually represents these numbers uh, it is going to be the revenue column so this is the solution that is going to reduce the number of columns from six to four and each of the column is actually going to represent a different value which is the desired solution to this question question three in power query you want to transform a table with multiple columns into a table with fewer columns and more rows which operation should we use so the four options are pivot column unpivot column unpivot other columns and transpose so the answer to this question is choice number b unpivot columns and the explanation says that the unpivot columns operation in power query allows you to transform a table with multiple columns into a table with fewer columns and more rows so we have already seen this in in the previous question that what is the operation of the unpivot column that it reduces the uh, the the columns the number of columns but it uh, it obviously increases the uh, rows which we are happy to have in our uh, data set so this is the correct answer question 5 you have two CSV files, names, products, and categories. The product file contains the following columns. So these are the columns for the product file. And the category files contains the following columns. So these are the columns in the categories file. You need to create a Power BI data set that will contain a single table named product. The product will the, the product will include the following columns. So the we, we need to create a power bi data set which will have which will be which will be a single table name product and these are the columns which are going to be in that particular table how should you combine the queries and what should you do on the categories query so we have two parts to this question we have to combine the queries these queries and now these are the options so append merge and transpose the the options to actually combine the queries we have to select one and then on the categories query we have the three options delete the query disable the query load and exclude the query from the report refresh so the answer to this question is that to combine the queries we need to perform a merge operation so we need to perform a merge operation so that we can combine the columns from both the tables and on the category queries we will be disabling the query load we will be disabling the query load because we do not want the categories table to actually be a part of the power bi data set so once you merge the queries then you can actually go and disable the query load for the categories uh, table or the categories uh, categories uh, file or the categories table question 9 you import two microsoft excel tables named customer and address into power query customer contains the following columns so these are the columns in the customer table the other table is the address which has these columns 
each customer id represents a unique customer in the customer table each address id represents a unique address in the address table you need to create a query that has one row per customer each row must contain city state region and country for each customer what should you do and these are the four options merge the customer and address tables group the customer and address tables by the address id column transpose the customer and address tables and the last option is append the customer and address tables the correct answer for this question is the option a which says that you have to merge the queries and a merge query operations join two existing tables together based on matching values from one or multiple columns you can choose to use different types of joins depending on the output you want so out of these options the first step which is the merge or which is actually representing a join operation between the customer and address table and we can clearly see that we have uh, based on the based on the address id because this is the column that is common in both the tables we can actually perform the merge operation question 10 you have two azure sql databases that contain the same tables and columns for each database you create a query that retrieves the data from a table named customer you need to combine the customers table into a single table the solution must minimize the size of the data model and support schedule refresh in powerbi.com what should you do to answer select the appropriate options so we have two answer areas and the first first answer area requires you to select one of these options based on this option to use to combine the customer tables and the options are append queries append queries as new merge queries merge queries as new and the other question is that action to perform on the original to the sql database queries and the four options are delete the queries disable including the query in report refresh disable loading the query to the data model duplicate the queries so the answer to this question is for the first part which says that the option to use the combined to uh, option to use to combine the customer tables is append queries as new so we are going to create a new query and append the queries and the second is the action to perform on the original two database uh, sql uh, two sql database queries is disable load loading the query to the data model so we are actually going to first append as a new query and then the original queries we are actually going to disable so these are not loaded as part of the data model because the question requires that we need to combine the customer data into a single table and this is the only option where we, we where we can you know do that and we also need to minimize the size of the data model so that means that we do not want the 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 original tables to be a part of the data model so that is why we are going to disable loading the query so that only this table is available as part of the data model question 11 you are working with a set of sales data that spans multiple years you want to create a power query solution that allows the user to load data for a specific year without altering the core query which approach should you adopt and we have these four options create a custom column in power query that filters the data based on the year and ask users to modify this columns formula as needed use the manage parameters option to create a year parameter and integrate it with the queries filter step change the source file name each year and update the source path in power query accordingly create a separate query for each year of the sales data the correct answer is option b which uses the manage parameters option to create a year parameter and integrate it with the queries filter step so it is very easy to actually use the parameters because we actually want to load the data for a specific uh, year so we can create a field a parameter uh, based on the year and then we can integrate this in the query filter step so we can just uh, put this parameter in the m script 
uh, and you know make this as part of the uh, filtering step that is performed inside the inside the m query so this is the correct answer question 12 you are building a report that consolidates sales data from three different systems each with its own date format and granularity daily monthly and yearly you want to ensure consistent time-based analysis across all systems what's the most effective way to achieve this so the four options are use power queries built in date functions to convert all date columns to a single format and granularity create separate date tables for each system and join data on these respective date tables generate a common date table with data with daily granularity and establish a relationship with the sales data from all the systems aggregate the sales data from all systems based on the lowest common granularity yearly and conduct the analysis the answer to this question is that the correct option is option c generate a common date table with daily granularity and establish relationships with the sales data from all these systems so we have already seen this that the, what is the benefit of creating a common date table and we can use uh, the same logic here we can generate a common date table and then through the relationships we can combine the different columns in the date table based on the granularity and then we can actually create relationships based on that so this is the correct answer question 13 you have sourced data from two different systems a crm system containing customer details and a sales system with transactional records both systems have a customer id field but upon inspection you have found out that the customer id in the crm system occasionally has trailing spaces what should you do to establish a reliable relationship between the tables and the four options are use power query to trim the customer id in both tables modify the database to remove trailing spaces in the crm system create a calculated column in the crm table in power bi to trim the customer id and use this for the relationship use a full outer join based on customer id without making any modifications the answer to this question is option a use power query to trim customer id in both tables and create a relationship so the simplest way to actually establish a relationship in case where we have an issue is that we can simply go and apply the trim to customer id columns in both the tables and this is also a very good practice that you actually go and uh, create a uh, you always apply the trim so that in case there is any hidden spaces at the, at the start or the, at the end so these are removed we can also create a calculated column but that would be an extra step and then we would have to actually use that column so easiest way is to trim the relationship so that uh, uh, so is, is to trim the customer id column so that a relationship can be established between both the tables using this particular column question 14 you built a report to analyze customer transactions from a database that contains the tables shown in the following table so you have two tables uh, customer and transactions and you have the columns given you import the tables which relationship should you use to link the tables and the four options are one to many from transaction to customer one to one between customer and transaction many to many between customer and transaction one to many from customer to transaction and the correct answer is option d one to many from customer to transaction and it is very easy to understand that here we have customer id as a primary key and the same customer id is there in the transaction table as a foreign key so we have seen in the data modeling that the relationship goes from the primary key to the foreign key and it is always uh, one to many between a dimension and a fact table so this is the correct answer which is option d question 16 which two blocks make up the m code that runs your query and the four options that we have are do and while if and then for and each and let and in so the answer to this question is let and in so you can open up any m code or any m script and you are going to see that the 
कोड इज विद इन दीज टू की वर्ड और दीज टू ब्लॉक्स विच आर द लेट ब्लॉक एंड द इन ब्लॉक सो दैट इज द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन सेवनटीन यू यूज पावर क्वेरी एडिटर टू इम्पोर्ट एंड प्रव्यू सेल्स डेटा फ्रॉम द ईयर्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन इन अ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल फाइल एज शोन इन द फॉलोइंग एग्जिबिट सो दिस इज द पावर क्वेरी एग्जिबिट दैट वी हैव एंड द क्वेश्चन सेज दैट यू नीड टू शेप द क्वेरी टू डिस्प्ले द फॉलोइंग थ्री कॉलम्स मंथ सेल्स एंड ईयर वट शुड यू सेलेक्ट इन द पावर क्वेरी एडिटर एंड द ऑप्शन दैट आर गिवन इंक्लूड मर्ज कॉलम्स ट्रांसपोज अनपेवेट कॉलम्स एंड पेवेट कॉलम सो द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन सी विच इज अनपेवेट कॉलम्स एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन दिस काइंड ऑफ अ क्वेश्चन बिफोर दैट वी ऑलरेडी हैव द मंथ कॉलम बट वी नीड टू ब्रिंग द ईयर कॉलम्स इन टू वन सो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन शुड बी वन कॉलम एंड देन देर इज अ कॉलम फॉर द सेल्स so that can only be done if we just unpivot these columns so unpivot columns is the right option question question 20 you have the following three versions of an azure sql database test production and development you have a data set that uses the development database as a data source you need to configure the data set so that you can easily change the data source between the development test and production database servers from powerbi.com what should you do and the four options are create a json file that contains the database server names import the json file to the dataset create a parameter and update the queries to use the parameter create a query for each database server and hide the development ta the development tables set the data source privacy level to organizational and use the replace value power query m function so the correct answer for this is option b which is create a parameter and update the queries to use the parameter so what we need to actually do is create a parameter and then we can just simply pass on the test production or the development databases to the parameter and that can be used to connect to the or configure to the or that can be used to connect to the data source so this was an explanation of all the 20 questions for this particular set of practice questions hopefully you would go back and revise the topics based on whatever you found was an area that you haven't really prepared so there are another set of questions which are again like 20 questions uh, that uh, that are that, that come after this video so make sure that you uh solve those questions for improved practice so that's all for this particular video and i'll catch up with you in the next one